Hey everybody, welcome to the Two Dudes Podcast. I'm Rick, that's Kevin. Uh, Got another good one here for you today. Talking about a great many things. As you know, we're always sports heavy and this is the uh, National Football League. It's underway, it's going good. And we got some good stuff on that to talk about. But first things first, Kev, how you doing, brother? Mind how my beard look right now. Um, It look all right. You need a little more length, but it look all right. Well, I've been lazy. I've been um, I've been rushed to go to the barber shop. I'm gonna go Thursday. I got a wedding to DJ Friday. If I'm being any wedding pictures, you know, gotta be clean cutting dabber, you know. Got you, got you. So you know, so all this gonna be gone. This will be trimmed up. You know, looks like my usual. You know, want to be dapper done. So, yeah, I feel you. Never know what bitches may be at the wedding. How you doing, girl? What's going on? Yeah, uh, after this funeral that happened this past Saturday, I'm probably just going to let mine just grow and grow. I I don't Dude. foresee any reason to cut it off anytime soon. I'm going to see how long I can get it. You get your ZZ Top on. Yes, sir. Okay, so I've been reading a lot of stuff in the news today about, I guess they had a Met Gala over the weekend. That's yes, fancy for artsy stuff. Yeah. Here's the problem I have with it. Nothing with, you know, any of the artsy stuff. Some of the dudes there, over-the-top fashion. And this is in the wake of that picture that you sent me a couple days before, that post with Russell Westbrook. Mm-hmm. Pete Davidson decided to wear a dress to the Met Gala. Um, some of the dude was wearing a uh black slim dress to the Met Gala. I have a question for you. What? What is it about dudes that think that it's okay now to start wearing dresses? See, here's the thing. Here's the thing I think you're missing. It's not that it's it's okay, but fashion is fashion. Everybody sees things completely different. You got people who see things the way you do. But like me and you, we probably see things completely opposite on a lot of things. Then there's something we might see the same on. It's just now in today's world, you have the ability to express how you feel that much more. No questions asked. And with that being said, you got me and carrying purses. You know what I'm saying? I can't front. My dad, he had one back in the day. It was like a little leather, like a little handbag kind of thing. I liked it. I had one. I'm like 12 years old with one. I thought it was dope. And I carried this thing for like a year, year and a half, I think, for I eventually was like, let me just go back to a wallet. It's just evolution. So right now, you got dudes that are that not the biggest, the smallest dudes that are wearing dresses that they really don't matter. They just trying to look a certain way or whatever to look cool when in all actuality, you're really not. But hey, you know, that's what makes you happy. Keep it up. So it's not, I don't think it's anything special. It's like you asked me, you know, about Russell. It's not that that's his coming out per se. That's just what they like to wear. You know, you got to realize men over in Scotland still wear kilts to this day. That's a little bit different, though. That's a cultural thing. thing. That's, That's a cultural a thing. It's a skirt. But, but it's a cultural thing. It's a skirt. I mean, oh, I mean since the beginning of time, since the beginning of time, men have wore skirts. I here's get that. Here's, here's the thing about it. How many of us was around then to justify that? So it's nothing more than a skirt. Right, but when I say it's a cultural thing, that's an everyday thing. They don't think any different because they didn't even have such thing as pants back then. Now we got dudes wearing pants all their lives, and just for shits and giggles, they want to put on a dress. Well, Not a skirt, it, a full dress. Again, how do we know what they wasn't doing that at home behind closed doors? Remember, supposedly Roosevelt was a cross-dresser. A lot of men have wanted to wear women's clothes just because. That's why whenever there's Halloween costumes, you see the man dress up as a half man, half woman, just cause, cause they want to do that type shit. 
going back to like that was killed or whatever. There probably some people was like, damn, I wouldn't mind wearing one. Your balls is out, air conditioned, you know. You know how guys think when it comes to ignorance. And so there's some out there that probably was the same way, like, I bet that probably feel good. Then they advertise, oh, it's the greatest thing I've ever worn. That's because they probably wanted to wear some pants, <laughs> you know? So it's just, I don't think nothing of it. If I had a son, man, them had to have a talk so I can make sure where you going with this. But a lot of the guys you see dressed like that are about the size of a chicken wing. They're not that big. And that's their way of standing out making it, you know, trying to look a certain way. Now, in your mind, you're like, get your gay ass up out of here. But you don't say that because it's not respectful. I'll say it because I don't give a fuck. But it just, it's not the end all be all. It's just dudes. Hey, I liked it. I wanted to wear it. A lot of them do it once. They won't do it again. They do it for shock right. They end up being talked about. It's, it's funny that you mentioned gay because the one person that was at the Met Gala that was gay didn't wear a dress. That was Frank Ocean. That's now, awesome, right? Frank huh? Ocean's all to the left of everything. He does his best. Him and his team do a serious think tank dive to make sure that he's opposite of the gay stereotype. And I give him credit for that. Oh, uh, I didn't say he didn't fuck up, though. He was walking around with a robotic baby. That's hilarious. <laughs> Pretty much. Oh, man, but... That right there makes you be like... Frank, why you got a robotic bait? That's just, you know, what you're a fool, Frank. I'm gonna laugh at that. Well, when I first saw the picture, I'm like, dude, he's got a mask on his kid. Wait, that's not a kid. That's a robot. <laughs> oh, and man. Also, I think him doing that is showing how some people feel the mask thing is asinine. But I'll tell you, um, Last weekend, <clears throat> DJing at the regatta throughout this week. Well, weekend before last, DJing there. This past weekend at the soccer games or whatever. I ain't been seeing people wear masks as if we wasn't told to wear masks. I don't know what's going on anymore. Man, I'm going to tell you something about COVID. Um, not the school where I work at but one of the surrounding schools, they recently mm -hmm. had a new outbreak. They had to shut down for a day or two. And when they come back in session, they will be required to wear masks. And our numbers are higher than they've ever been in Stafford. And that's a shock. So it is, it's getting bad, if not worse, than it has been before. This, this mess is crazy. You know, KC overall supposedly went down like a point or whatever, but they still in the red. What were y'all's numbers at? I think we was like 16.3. Now we're like 14.8%. Now, I will also tell you this, because I know I mentioned a couple times on the show, <clears throat> as far as vaccinations, I'm doing my research uh, because... I want to make sure that it's something that's safe for me and doesn't aggravate the cancer situation or anything like that. I have completed that research and um, I am scheduled to uh, take that needle uh, not on this coming Tuesday, but the following Tuesday. So I'll go down. Yeah, what you schedule it? At the uh, health department uh, in my local area. I didn't oh. just want anybody to do it. <laughs> I wanted to go to an actual place where that's where they do. That's what they do. And I know you can walk into any old Walmart and get a, a COVID shot. But, yeah, I used yeah. to work at a Walmart. <laughs> do I want to yeah. trust? <laughs> I, um, I went and got the first shot today as of going to the doctor's office. Surprised they didn't do it there. I ended up going to Walgreens and they uh pharmacist did it. So I got the uh Pfizer. I got the Pfizer shot today. 
Because, you know, I, we talked about my medical shit last week, didn't we? Yes, we did. All right. So, update on that. Um, they looked at my leg, looked at the abscess or whatever. They don't think it's diabetic, but they still did blood work to check my A1C just in case. Mm-hmm. They said, if so, I guess I might get, like, another pill to take or whatever, and that'd be about it, which I'm like, I'm good with that or whatever. They told That's me to cool. keep taking my uh, antibiotic, which I plan on doing. Um, but still going to be treated wound care-wise, and that'll be from some spot in Lee Summit. They just got to reach out to me to get that set up. So once I hear from them, that'll get the ball rolling. Got a new doctor. Doctor was real cool. The head doctor, she was real cool, too. The nurse was beautiful. The, the LPN, fucking beautiful. But... You know, your mama with you. You really can't try to holler at some chick with your mama there. How you going to let that stop you? Then she your saw your mama waist. know about game because if your daddy didn't have game, you wouldn't be here. Hey, that's, we'll talk about that another day. Uh, <laughs> he grew up a wild boy. But then, like, when I saw what my weight actually was, I kind of sunk in embarrassment because I'm like, I can't believe I let myself get this big or whatever. And the doctor, we talked about everything. I let him know I was like, you know, depression divorce, side swipe, you know, and he didn't judge me, hold it against me. And they was just like a lot of my issues with my legs or whatever is, you know, unfortunately, when you have a desk job, you don't move around enough. So the little foot pedal thing that I just got, they want me to use that to keep my legs active, keep my muscles active, and hopefully that'll kind of jumpstart everything. And they also said, like, you got these platelets in you, like these tissues that float around to help fight the infection. They was like, they feel like my shit's kind of stuck. And it just needs, you know, your car, yeah. I need to get mine to where it just goes through and it keeps going. And the lady said, she looked at my, my abscess or whatever. She's like, don't feel hot. Don't feel solid. Like, I just think it's just a bunch of fluid that probably had nowhere to go. Because those tissues wasn't there to, you know, kind of soak that up or whatever. Yeah. And also, I need to stop being a country ass dude, walk around barefoot outside in the grass, like I ain't got shit to fear. And driving barefoot isn't a good thing. You know, you need to, well, you can drive barefoot, but have your shoes when you get out the car, you know, just get you some sandals or something. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, So, you know, don't, don't do dumb shit like that. That's, that's, but you know, at the same time, I was in my, I won't say a purple haze because I wasn't high. I was just in a, a depressed haze, shall we say. But we talked about it, and the guy was like, Are you good now? You say being at home by yourself? I was like, Yeah. He was like, You sure? I said, Yeah, I'm good. I said, That was a situation that came and went. I said, I'm finally uh, trying to get back to my normalcy. I was like, So, and the first part about that is taking care of my body. So, Thursday, I'll meet again with uh, my trainer. Like, no, there's really no regard, no holdups or anything. And just work on trying to eat better and start working out. And then from there, you know, just hopefully watch the pounds go away. My mom thinks they're probably going to keep me on that blood pressure medicine and maybe give me a water pill. Then apparently this water pill is going to just have me literally releasing weight, shall we say. Now, um, whatever. That's interesting because if you take blood pressure medication, it'll make you go to the bathroom a lot anyway. So yeah. you may not need a water pill. And it has, and um, let me see. So, and the guy, and I, I get it, the doctor credit because he sat down with me. Well, we, we was always sitting there talking or whatever because he was trying to get an you know, idea of who I was and what I am or whatever. And he told me point blank, he was like, with your size and height, you're considered obese. He was like, and I worry about you in crowds. And if you happen to catch it, he was like, because if you catch it, I worry about how your body's going to fight it. And no one has said that to me before. But that was kind of like a different approach. Um, kind of like an eye opener, huh? Yeah, it was. You know, and it's like, I knew I was going to get a shot at some point. I just, you know, me and you from that same club, and we, neither one of us, like, I just is getting forced on you because we know how the thing's supposed to be done. Right. 
but you know, sadly, it's one of the things sometimes you gotta just you gotta let go and you gotta, you know, not I wanna say follow, but you gotta get in line sometimes and just pray that it works. Yeah. And, and so I, I'm just glad that I, you know, did my homework and studied the facts first, because I want to be sure, you know. And, and 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 I'm pretty sure that I'm as sure as I can be, let's put it that way. Well, look, I, I don't good. have I don't have any other reason not to at this point. So that's the reason why I am. And just like you and health reasons, you know, I want to make sure because I work around a lot of people, a lot of kids and a lot of adults. I don't want to bring something home to my kid or my wife. You and, see, and that's, and it's almost like, I'm about to get deep for a second. You know, things happen for a particular, it's like things happen and they're happening for a reason. So Friday, I went to Kaylee's soccer game. I did that. Uh, Jody took Jai to her band. You know, we flip flop or whatever. Yeah. And, you know, Jai did her band thing. We ended up coming home, me and Kaylee, because, you know, she got introduced to the world of the Charlie horse when you're not hydrated enough. Got it in both legs. I was like, oh, you don't want to listen to daddy. I tell you, one water bottle ain't enough during a soccer game. You learn the hard way that you need to. They sweat that water bottle out. Yeah. It, that, that guy, trust me, game number two, Saturday, three bottles got taken with her. So we come to the house. Jody drops the Jai off, go about her way. Saturday, soccer games. I'm at work, soccer games. Come to the crib. Sunday, I, um, you know, do work or whatever, come home. Well, it sounds like nothing, right? It sounds like you probably like get to the point. Yeah. Sunday night, Jai gets a text. Hey, I just wanted to let y'all know, I just tested positive for COVID. I get a phone call from her mama because Jai didn't know how to tell me. She thought I was going to be mad. I'm like, why are we mad at you? You had nothing to do with it. And Jody goes, well, my daughter's been exposed. So we got to figure out what's the next step. So that right there, you went from talking about it to where it's right in your face and you got to deal with it. And that's all I was like, damn, how we go deal with this shit? So out the gate, y'all not going to school, y'all not going to soccer practice, we got to get y'all tested. Doctors all were like, hold on, we can't test them till Wednesday. If we test them today, it's going to be a false positive, more right. than likely. We need a couple days. So they've been with me just kind of just, you know, chilling because they couldn't go to school. Jai tells me all the sophomores in band, they're home, sitting and waiting. So then the school calls yesterday talking to Jody. They call her, you know, again, and they call today because all this got to get reported to the health department for their records. And they said basically Jai can't go back till Tuesday when it's been 10 days. They said Kaylee could have went. They don't understand why we kept her home. We was like, well, she had interaction with her sister and we in close proximity. Cause you seen my house. They got a nice house, but ain't no mansion. So there's no way we're not gonna interact with each other. You know, thankfully I got tested Saturday at work. Uh -huh. And I ain't got no phone call. So my test came back negative. Did they do the <laughs> nasal test? Yeah, yeah. They shoved it on up there. No, nah, no, nah, they, they don't shove it. They go about well, maybe that far up or whatever. And I told their mom, I was like, you need to get tested too. I ain't getting tested. She has yet to get tested ever. Because working from home, she ain't had to get tested. She's trying not to ever get tested. And I told her, you picked her up and brought her home and you took her to the soccer game Saturday. Hey, real you quick before you finish. Full disclosure to everybody that's listening that has never been tested, guess what? Your time is coming. Sooner or later, one way or another, somehow everybody's going to get tested at least once. It's coming. Yeah, so she's dying and avoiding having to get tested. And I was like, whatever, hey, you know, I, I, I legally ain't got to worry about that no more. So that, that's on you. 
But um, now, all, about yeah, what yeah. you said about how this doesn't make sense as far as when Jaya can come back compared to Kaylee, one of the things that I've heard or found out firsthand at the school where I work, because um, several of our seniors in the high school are in quarantine right now because they were in contact with somebody who uh, tested positive, I believe. However, and, and this is the part that, that's weird. Some of the people that they've been around is not quarantined, but they're quarantined. And I'm, it's a head scratcher because, you know, you got a little brother that goes to the middle school. He, he's okay. How does that work? If you're in quarantine, why isn't the sibling in quarantine? Just like you said. And to make well, matters worse, mm -hmm. um, it, uh, it, it's, it's all screwed up. Because if you've already had one day at class, what about the people that were in proximity to you? Well, why probably... would you wait to test? Because you're exposing that many more people. Ground zero is, is has already spread. I don't like I don't like how they go about this. It's one of those things to where they're trying to say that it takes a certain amount of time to show itself. And they want to wait for it to be seen versus Oh, everything look fine. And then three, four days later, they're playing catch up. So they're trying to act like they got it time to where, okay, if you was around him on Friday, then around the fourth or fifth day, that's when we'll be able to see it. That's when we're going to test for it and we're going to know for sure. They said the reason why Kaylee could have went to school is because she didn't have direct contact. She was basically through, the, through her sister or whatever. But damn, well, I'm like pretty sure direct, that's probably indirect. But it was like she was indirect with her sister who was around the guy or whatever. Exactly. But I'm, I'm sure there's been cases to where, say, you was around somebody, but it didn't get you, but I'm around you and it got me. It, so it's just, exactly. there's no rhyme or reason. It just, I think it's easier for them to focus on direct contact versus non direct. So therefore, until Kaylee's like she got it, she's a nine factor. It's all about who was around. All right. And Let's go to my, something ridiculous here. Uh, just, just, just one more thing. My thing is, I personally feel, and I told my child this, I told her mama, I personally think it's asinine for only the sophomores in the band to be at home. If you think only the sophomores talk to just each other and they don't intertwine with the other classmen in the band, you're a fucking idiot. And you deserve whatever comes from this to your band. And, and, and that's my case because, you know, sophomores, just like the case that I mentioned, they've got brothers and sisters, older and younger. So just by association, you've, you've exposed more people than just that little handful. So you're right. It is very asinine. Because I'm just like, the whole band itself should be at home. Because you've been in the same closed room rehearsing, practicing. On Friday, yes, you was outdoors, but y'all all was around each other indoors before you went outdoors. I'm just like, so that's why I'm just like, some people, because the old black guy that teaches the class, some people are just in denial. They don't want to accept what it is. And I think that's a prime example of that right there because it's real damn stupid. True. All right, now let's go to something ridiculous here. I didn't read this article. I stumbled on it uh, in health and fitness uh, today off uh, msn.com. Hear me out. This is the title. Vegan men fart seven times more than non-vegans, comma, study finds. First of all, 
who did a study on this and why? What so the question indeed? should be why is this a study? Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Who are we just reaching for things now? Are people so yeah. tired about hearing about Trump, Biden, COVID, war? Oh, I know. Let's do a story on farting. Eh. Yeah. Everybody wants something different. That's, that's just that's how it goes. Everybody wants to hear something different. Yeah, that, that's definitely something different. Also something different. There's about to be another Tomb Raider movie. Uh, it says here, Tomb Raider uh, anime casts Haley Atwell as Laura Croft. So Ooh. I guess it's going to be a new anime series. So it'll be cartoon, uh, which makes sense. That. Cause they can have that. Well, I don't, I, I don't know if they'll aim it at, I imagine they're going to aim this at uh, the adults. They've got to, this isn't something for kids. This isn't a Saturday morning cartoon. They can have it. It's going to be interesting. Also uh, in the entertainment news, I did check out that uh, Hawkeye um, trailer that uh, you sent me, and I, I'm not I'm not too down on it because, like I said, it's a TV series, and the more I hear about it, I see where they're going with it. Uh, Marvel is kind of recycling or uh, moving out some of the old blood, so to say, step by step, and moving in some new blood so that when they go to the next phase. They've got some uh, younger, different superheroes. And that's Hawkeye why is no his different. His daughter is just as good as him then, supposedly. Well, that's not his daughter. That that's that's uh, a that's Kate Bishop. That's somebody that he still trains, but uh she'll be the next Hawkeye. Um, yeah, because I well, I didn't know it was gonna be a TV show. I thought it was gonna be a movie until my lovely brother told me it was gonna be a TV show, him and his wife told me to shut the hell up because I know nothing about Marvel. I was like, okay. Just because you name your dog Marvel doesn't make you an expert. Uh, yeah, that's a bit much. Yeah. Okay, so um, as we move on, I'm sure you've seen at least one of these lovely movies here. I just want to let everybody know that over the next couple of days, I am going to be uh, doing some filming for some new episodes of Rewind, Relive, and Review. I've taken this week off because I just need to, you know, gather myself, get some rest, and do some things. But uh, one of the ones that I'm going to be featuring soon is going to be the uh, Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard. And uh, in doing so, I'm also going to inadvertently review the hitman's bodyguard which has been out for quite some time but uh, i want to talk about both of those because i found those movies both of them to be quite hilarious and i think that you know if you're going to pair two people it might as well be ryan reynolds and samuel L. jackson and then when you I add selma think... hayek to the mix you can't go wrong i didn't see the ending of the second one i kept starting and stopping when I uh, when I had that one service that I didn't care for, and I never watched the end of it, so I uh, I don't even know what ended up happening in the end. Well, let's put it this way: if they want to come out in two more years with the hitman's wife's bodyguard's son, they can do that. Wow! But I don't oh, know how I don't know how close you got to the end. So I'm not going to tell you anything about their son. I don't know, I probably won't see it, so it don't matter. Okay. Well, they tricked Ryan Reynolds into signing the document because she couldn't have kids. They adopted him. Wow. <laughs> so you already had the first one that featured Samuel L. Jackson because it was the hitman's bodyguard. Mm -hmm. This one was about her, the hitman's wife's bodyguard. So it might as well be the hitman's bodyguard's son, hitman's bodyguard's wife's son, whatever. Bring it full circle. Um, That's so stupid. 
yeah, but these things make you laugh because they're so far fetched. And we need that right now in society. All right. Enough about movies, TV shows. Let's get to some uh, real life um, reality TV, man style reality TV, the National Football League. Opening day was Sunday. We had a Monday night game as well. Yeah, that bullshit Thursday night game, I ain't worried about it. Um, I just want to touch on one specific division, and then we can go over our surprises from any any other game out of other divisions. But how about the AFC West? Everybody's want to know. That doesn't happen very often. You were? The entire AFC West is 1-0. I thought that happened before. It doesn't happen very often. It has happened before. But usually, there's always that one team that has to mess it up in a division and, and, and lose that weekend. You know, I figured that was going to be y'all. Why'd you figure it was going to be us? Because we had the toughest opponent? Now, we had the toughest opponent. Um, I'm going to say no, because if you look at strength of schedule, last year Baltimore beat up on the Browns twice. Strength of schedule means nothing. Y'all really need to go with that strength of schedule bullshit. Okay, then just look at the current roster. Baltimore has the better uh, secondary. They've got the better defensive line than Cleveland. Cleveland they does have a better, better receiving core, but Baltimore has better – quarterback so it's a three to one edge for Baltimore now I, I, I give Cleveland props they hung with Kansas City for <clears throat> about three minutes but they couldn't hang with them for that last quarter and and as you know as a chief fan if you're going to beat Kansas City, you've got to go the entire distance. Yeah, play four quarters. Yep. So, in the last year and a half, I still say in the regular season, there's only been one team that's beat Kansas City. Go ahead, say it now, Kevin. Say it with me now. Go Raiders. You got to give them their props. Not yeah, because they beat Kansas City does. last year. I mean, you know, that that's not a good claim to fame. We want to get better. And they are taking steps to getting better. And you have to put respect on Derek Carr's name. By the way. By the uh, way, he, why he's fine there. Why? He's, he's the number one rated quarterback right now. He threw enough, but he played like trash. And he has I, got whoa, to stop whoa, whoa. How did he play like trash? He has got to stop jumping when he throw that damn ball. Oh, he learned that from Brett Favre. He needs to stop that shit. You get a little extra oomph on it when you jump. Okay. Now, look, That's we can't all be Mahomes and just, like, flick it 50 yards to the left. No, nah, it, it's – hey, that was more of a little – just a little dang. It wasn't no flick. Just a little, little jump ball. Yeah. I'll put you like this. All these quarterbacks that they tried to make the next Mahomes or Mahomes competitors, they all look like shit this past weekend. Because if you watch the Buffalo game, everything Josh, oh, my God, he's firing that. That Gannon, he rose to that. All said and done, they fucking lost. And he goes, I'm like, I need to pull it back and stop trying so hard. Yeah, quit living up to the hype that they're giving you. That's what you need to stop doing. And, and I feel you on that. And that's the reason why I bring up Carr so much, because Carr gets no respect. And if you look at well, his he numbers, like not, he, did not, he did not play like trash. Carr looked like he had never been to Raiders offense Sunday. I don't know what. It just – he had happy feet for no fucking reason. I'm just what? like, bro, calm down. You know the system. And he just kept – Dude, like, if, if I had Calais Campbell coming up the middle on every play, I'd have happy feet too. 
I'm not here to call him Mahomes. I'm not. I know better than that. But I need people to get off of him because he's not as bad as people make him out to be. If you look at his numbers and Matthew Stafford's numbers, and I'm going to send you the YouTube link on this after the show, where Keyshawn and whoever he co-hosts his show with, we're talking about the same thing. Those two guys are identical in every stat line down the line. Yet Matthew Stafford always gets the praise and everybody's always getting on Derek Carr. Now, I well, call Stafford on that. Stafford's going to get the praise because he stayed in Detroit and he got left by Megatron. Megatron made Stafford what he is. Carr doesn't get the praise because Carr doesn't look as the prototypical Raider quarterback. He would just, they don't, he doesn't look Raider S to them. So oh, you're talking about that bombing it down the field 40 yards on every play? Yeah, however you want, you know, he don't look like Jeff George, you know, he, he don't look like Cole Pepper, you know, he don't look like that somebody's going to just rip you apart type QB. That's just, that's Who was the last sport. Raiders quarterback that went to the Super Bowl? Rich Gannon. Yep, dink and dunk. So, but it's not always about time, the bomb. No, it was the same time, though, Gannon had an essence about him. So, he's like, okay, I can see him as a Raider. Derek Carr doesn't have that. Derek Carr, he, nothing about him says Raider. He doesn't fit the Raider-esque mold of a – so, you know, they, the Raiders get the moniker of being a hell raiser, being badass dudes when y'all far from it. And the Quarters will be the ringleader of that, and nothing about Derek Carr says badass dude. I mean, most wear eyeliner and nail polish. Nothing about that says badass dude. Dude does not wear eyeliner and nail polish. Nail polish. You said what? what? I said, dude does not wear eyeliner and nail polish. I've seen it before during the press conference. Either he's just a tremendous Kiss fan or he's a lost cause. I'll let you decide. But um, before you froze, like uh, Derek Carr gets the Chiefs defense, um, I read something really traumatizing. I'm getting tired of people insisting on changing things. A staple in Kansas City, you would know being a I said, are you a Raytown South graduate, right? I sure am. Proud Cardinal. Yeah, okay. Whatever that was about. But I just read the Royals are moving shit around like a Rubik's Cube. Um, oh, boy, who put the team back together and got us the ring and all that other shit who came from Atlanta that's still here that said he was only going to be here five to seven years. He's now president. Someone else uh, dating more. He's president now. Somebody else is the GM. The new owner has said that we're on lease till 2031. So we got 10 year lease still to be where we're at. But he's scouting the area downtown, considering the relocation of the Royals. I don't like that idea. Now, I don't like that at all. I am not a Chiefs fan. You're correct. But I like the Royals. Actually, I love the Royals. I think that that is the stupidest idea ever. Because in that complex, for as long as anybody can remember, you've had Arrowhead next to Kauffman Stadium. And, and you can call it GEH. You can call the other one whatever. It's Arrowhead and Kauffman. And it always will be. And, and those two need to and should always be right next door. It just wouldn't be the same. And on a side note, you are right. Things are changing quite a bit because I remember three years ago when the Raiders were talking about leaving and building this brand new stadium called Allegiant. Everybody was like, ha ha, now you're not, no longer at the Oakland Coliseum. You've got one of those stadiums with a sponsor name on it. And you do. Yes. And look what happened to y'all. G-E-H-A Field at Arrowhead or whatever you want to call it. And, 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 yes, full disclosure, I was down in Kansas City Saturday, drove by the lovely Sprint, <clears throat> I mean, now T-Mobile Center. That just don't even roll off the tongue right because that's always been the Sprint Center, and they got the big old pink T-Mobile sign on it now. Horrible. Horrible. I am so sick of 
and I know it's part of sports now because you get the big bucks for it, this naming rights thing. I'm not sick of it. That's what it does for the team. It helps hey. the broadcast team be relevant. Hey, if you're going to get it done, though, do it Raider style. Give your stadium a nickname. You already got one. You guys just went old school. You just keep calling it Arrowhead. We don't need a nickname. We're already great. That is the arrogance of the Chiefs fan. How are you so arrogant? And you, you've you won one Super Bowl in 50 years, bro. 50 years. I'm 51 years old, which means in my lifetime, I've seen Kansas City win one Super Bowl. Guess what? In my lifetime, I've seen my team win three. You're, you're, and don't say it's the past, Rick. Don't bring up the past. Well, it's been Apple's two years annoying. since you won. It's been two Apple years since you won. Don't bring up the past. And the fashion that we did it was record breaking. So we're in the books. Records beyond just going to Super hey, Bowl. Hey, newsflash. Anybody that, anybody that wins any Super Bowl is in the books because nobody's you, won that you, Super Bowl before. You didn't listen to the finish. We're in the books for going to it. We're in the books for setting records for it. Records you, during. And you know what? You certainly got a record last year in the Super Bowl. The number one that, offense that, of the that, league that, scores three field goals. I give Tampa they props. The kicker that is the defense, Super Bowl MVP for the losing team. That defense won that game for them. We didn't lose to Brady. We lost to that defense. Now, what I don't care for, and I think, and I, I want to call it bullshit, I keep hearing commentators, Tampa's only team that brought back all 22 starters. We did that last year. We brought back all 22 starters. Did they forget about that? No, last year you only brought back 21. No, we uh, ended up with 22. We uh -uh. I think it was, Duke, it was Duke, uh, the, was the doctor. The Duke, what's the doctor's name? Duvernay or something like oh, that? Oh, that's right. Bitch ass. He, that was yeah. I forgot about him. He, he, he bolted yeah. for because yeah. of COVID. So it, it wouldn't Stay count. In the fucking order. Oh, bitch ass dude. Soft ass, <laughs> baby. All right. So, you know. Like I said at the beginning, the AFC West is all one and zero, but Kansas City played somebody that was tough. Las yeah, Vegas I, played somebody that was tough. Denver didn't play nobody. The Giants aren't there yet. The Chargers didn't play nobody. Whoever they played's not there yet. I think it was Washington or somebody. So it's really a two-team race in that division. And, yes, I mentioned it last week when we did our records, and I still give props to Kansas City. They're going to win the division. But Vegas is getting in as a, a wild card. For the simple reason that Chucky, Chucky's not going to go 6-1 and one or 6-3 and three and then fall flat this year because they finally got something that they didn't have the last two years, a defense that can play. If they play anywhere like they played last night, for the next 15, 16 weeks, they'll be in games. And that's all we can ask. Just be in the games. The offense won't always play like shit. They'll get it together. Remember, these are uh, offensive starters that never saw a preseason game this year. Uh, Gruden elected not to play them at all in the preseason. That was stupid. It is, but it isn't because you don't want them to get hurt. As Baltimore. They was down three running backs before we even hit the field. So it, 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 it kind of makes sense. And I'm not going to lie, if they came in full strength, would we have pulled that out? Probably not. They didn't. We did. On to the next one. Now, around the rest of the league, though, tell me one game that you think was a surprise or a shocker. I'm going to tell you mine. Green Bay didn't even put up a fight. They just laid down and let New Orleans run over them. That's the game of the week, shock wise. You don't even know the game. Who saw – you saw New Orleans being competitive. You didn't see New Orleans whooping ass. And New Orleans whooped ass. Yeah, because right after that Chiefs game, I flipped over that game like, why is Jordan Love in the game? Oh, look at that score. That's why. Horrible. Oh, but before I complete this football talk, I, I do want to give a quick shout out to Nelson and his Eagles. Didn't see that one coming. Did they win? Yeah. Didn't they play the Falcons and win? 
I already did play the five and win. Yeah, we know, yeah. I don't keep up with teams beneath me, so I don't know. You know. Uh, well, you know, I don't we, keep up with pigeons. The, the the bets are coming, bro. You, Again, you, you gonna have you gonna have to see the pigeons. eagle sooner or later, and and apparently it's gonna be pretty soon if I'm correct. Again, I, don't worry about pigeons, you know. Okay, the views expressed on this show about the Eagles are strictly from Kevin. Um, I didn't say nothing, Nelson. I didn't say nothing. All right, he can come on here the week that we play him. I don't, I don't pay attention to, you know, ghetto birds or whatever. I don't, I don't pay attention to shit like that, you know, because they're going to get, you know, if that target will come out and they're going to get popped. And, oh, boy, the young quarterback, that was a good move on their part. Should have been done, put him in. But, you know, he going to get introduced to Frank Clark and his, his guns. So I ain't worried about that. Chris Jones looked like he did in the game last night. And see, this is the thing. I've seen the benefit of Chris Jones. He's not, and what people have to realize, he's a sack, he gets sacks, but he's not going to get sacks at the start of the game. He's the type that he go bang with the defense, offensive line, and then as soon as they make that miss seven in third or fourth quarter, quarterback's done. That happened like three times in that game. As soon as that line got tired and went the wrong way, sack happened. Sack happened. Every time. Chris Jones is like a running back, but he's on defense. He's going to wear you down. Right? He has the speed and everything, but he's not going to blow by you. But if he gets past you, you're in trouble. Because he showed the speed when he made a tackle on the running back in that game. So it's just – He's not a burner to where he's LT game, you know, four or five sacks in the game. He's going to give you that, I'm going to stop these drives late in the game sack that you need. That's when he steps up and makes his money. He looks yeah. like assistant against the line and run and shit like that. But fourth quarter, that's his time. I used to always see Derrick Thomas do it. It was always like him and that punk-ass Neil Smith. It's like they just knew, okay – Hey, I'm going in. You come behind me, get your money. And they're saying that would always happen. That's how Chris Jones is. Now, if Frank Clark can stay healthy and we get somebody to do decent on his side, our pass rush will be better. We was lacking a pass rush, but we got it when we needed it. And what I like that Andy finally did, it's like he was playing possum. I don't know why, but he started running the ball second half. And I forgot Hilaire could fucking run. And he was running motherfuckers over, getting four or five, six, seven yards a clip. He almost broke one. But I think he was a bronze his damn self. He was so wide open. And then he ended up getting tackled. We got to keep feeding him the rock to remind him, hey, you can run also, not just catch. That way yeah, because you definitely don't want Andy Reid slipping back into his, oh, thunder. That's raining outside. Okay, you definitely don't want Andy Reid slipping back into his Philadelphia form where all they did was pass. Well, like, I think he knows, and if he knows this, the league ain't going to be ready. Hilarious fucking Westbrook all over again. You know how Westbrook killed in Philly. Yes. If he used Hilarious like he used Westbrook, curtains. Just, just close them bitches. Curtains. He's going to average about 150, 200 yards a game between catching and running. Then you throw in another Bill 50 from the Cheetah. Then you know your boy Travis is going to give you 100. We just need Robinson to be consistent as that other receiver. I'm, I'm, not, worried. I'm not worried about Cheetah. Travis is the one that you worry about on that team. Yeah, because you want some fantasy points. You <laughs> sorry, bitch. Oh uh, man, I forgot for a second that I had Kelsey, but no, I'm I'm talking about from an opponent standpoint, because we already know we can stop Hill at any time we want to. We've done it. We can't really stop can't. Kelsey. You really can. We have. We have. Hill got good numbers in all the games. In, in both you. games, we did. He got good numbers against y'all. Kelsey game. killed us in that second game. Yeah, Travis. Here, here's the thing. Travis is going to get 10 catches every game at will if he wanted. And if they're only he 10 yards a catch, he still gets over 100 yards. I'm saying he's going to get 10. Hill's going to get three to seven, 
but it's gonna be over 100 yards. One touchdown may be factored in there. That that's what Hill's gonna do. Hill's never gonna be 13 catches in one game. He might get lucky right now and get 10 catches. He's never going to be that big number catch. That's why he's never had 100 catches in the season. He's always going to be between 75 to 85 catches a game. That, Real that, talk, I would like y'all to uh, bring along Byron Pringle a little bit more because he interests me. I think that he has the tools to be a good number two. He's just too little. Pringle's smaller than fucking t- uh, Hill. Yeah, Pringle's but think about this. Um, he's that midget cousin that won a ball all the time, but – like, nigga, you too little. Deshaun Jackson, another little receiver that can ball out. Pringle's smaller than Deshaun Jackson. Deshaun Jackson small? had height. Pringle doesn't have height. Mm, okay. I, see, I, don't, like, I don't know the stats, so. No, Pringle's not that tall. If he was taller, then he could be a factor. I like him at slot because of his lack of height. So, basically, he's kind of like a uh, Renfro. Oh what? Yeah, 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 yeah. That that puts who, who by the way balled out yesterday. He did. I give him crops. He was looking lost for a second, but he did do what he needed to do. Well, like I said, I'm not gonna lie, that entire offense was looking lost at the beginning of the game. When they when they were down 14 to nothing, I'm like, oh Lord, here we go. But they they they, they came into it. Now my fear is how will they respond in Pittsburgh on Sunday? Will you get blown out? Will you be competitive or will you win? Pittsburgh showed this past Sunday their offense is getting going. It hasn't started yet. So they're they're not to where they're gonna blow teams out. They're gonna stay consistent, but the problem is that defense is gonna beat you the fuck up. But let me ask you this. So young about line Pittsburgh. ready for TJ Watt. That's yeah. the question. Yeah. I, I feel you on that. Booker out at the linebackers and them corners and that secondary, they are all physical and they throwing people to the ground. Is your team ready for that is going to be the question. I think that they'll shut down our receivers, but I don't think they have an answer for Waller. That's what Booker on Waller. I can see Booker getting... Ooh, he'll get burnt all day long. You sure you want Booker to get roasted like that? Do you know how fast thing, you know, Waller is? That's the thing. Booker's going to play him physical. Waller's going to eat some dirt and have to get up and take off one. They're this, gonna this gonna be under. They're going to do an up and under where Booker, he's going straight off the line every time. Or he's going to take them to the ground. We're going to see if Waller can play physical. So if they put Booker on like I think they will, Booker's about to take him through 12 rounds of hell. That's it's going to be interesting. Contract. Now, on the flip side, I think that they're going to feast on Roethlisberger. Think about this. We just got done with a mobile quarterback that can run at will. Ben ain't like that no more. He's almost That's a statue true. back there. That's why their number one pick was a running back, and that boy is fast. Yeah, but in a passing oh. situation, Max Crosby is just going to pin his ears hey, back and say, I'm coming. But they're – they're running first, past second now. They're back to when Bettis first got there. So the thing is, are your linebackers ready to plug those gaps? Because that dude from Alabama, unlike um, – what was the, the one boy uh, that couldn't see a hole to save his life? That, that Connor? Was his name James Connor? No, no. Well, no, Connor was – they. <laughs> I don't even know Connor in the league anymore. It's funny how Connor got used to run old boy out of Pittsburgh. Oh, you're talking about Le'Veon Bell. Yeah, but, you know, Bell should still be in Pittsburgh. They thought they had gold in Connor and they had fool's gold. But, no, the guy I'm talking about that came from Alabama that I think you drive him in fantasy to where Meredith play was because he played for Oakland. The hole was right here. He ran that way, and the whole clearly was right there, biggest day. Damn, I can't think of what his name is because he fell all the way down to the XFL trying to get back in the league. Wow, I'm, I'm not sure who you're talking about because he wasn't a starter for Oakland, was he? Yes, he was a high draft pick at running, he was back. running back. 
because before uh, before Josh Jacobs, we had uh, Murray, Latavius Murray. His name was Richardson. Some Richardson, I want to say. He was before that. And he was out of Alabama. They thought he was going to be one of those players that's going to be the truth. I think him and Taylor Mays came out at the same time. And mm. they both basically fizzled in the league. Although Taylor Mays played better because he played safe. Oh, you're talking about Jalen Richard. Was that his name? Uh, I, I don't know. Because he had, he had braids and shit or whatever. And I, I cannot think what his fucking name was. No, it wasn't. Because he had a horrible rookie season. And the thing was, he couldn't find the hole. He wasn't fat. He was just, he was a trash-ass running back. I'm going to have to do my research on that. I, I'm not sure. Uh, let's get to picks real quick. Uh, All right. I think we I mean, both had some shitty uh, picks this past week. I ended up nine and seven. You ended up seven and nine. Um, currently ranked number six in the league. That's not saying much because that means there's five people still in front of me. And You're very new. You're six. I'm probably way at the bottom. You are 24th, I believe. Six? You're but, very but like I said, I'm nine and seven. You're seven and nine. So think about all of those people that you're tied with. So technically, you're not really 24th. There's like a like 15-way tie for seventh place. Eh, that Chiefs loss hurt, hurt me because I, I just – You, you want to know what hurt me? Know. Here's what hurt me. I was going with Tennessee. Not Tennessee. I was going with the Houston Texans all the way until right before game time. And I switched to the last possible minute and said, yeah, Jacksonville got this. Should have yeah, never did that. I want Jacksonville too. Should have never did that. Because I didn't think Tyrod was ready. And I ain't seen no Houston highlights all preseason. Yeah, I just heard everybody talking about what a mess Houston is. What a mess Houston is. What are they going to do with quarterback? Yep. I fell for the hype. The Houston game, the Green Bay game, Kansas City game. Those are three L's I took right there. I went with Kansas City. I'm smarter than that. If it was in Cleveland, I probably would have went with Cleveland. But beginning of the season, you're not gonna mess with that Arrowhead magic. I don't care I who just, you are. I, just, I was, I was a poor guy. I figured this would be Baker's makeout season, and he came out like that. He just didn't finish like that. He went from new Baker to old Baker. Seemed like overnight. And and isn't it funny that I kept seeing those progressive commercials? Every time <laughs> after he got put to the sideline, it was horrible. I about it though. Uh, everybody want to talk shit about my boy Dirty Dan. Who caused that interception? Dirty Dan going in there for that sack. Then that, everybody was like, while well, we get dude from Minnesota, who went up there and got that ball? Oh boy from Minnesota. Yeah, he did all right. All right, who the Chiefs got coming up this week? Shit, I don't uh Baltimore. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That's right. That's the Sunday night game in Baltimore. So you're on the road too. So we didn't both had a home game and now we both got a road game. What's your prediction on that game? Honestly, if Frank Clark doesn't play to give us some point of a push on that line. Baltimore is gonna have it. Um, they'll they'll have an edge with with uh, you know they with you know they was what's that fucking quarterback's name? Um, Lamar Jackson. Yeah, Action Jackson. They'll have an upper hand, but think about them if if they don't get a they go speed track Le'Veon Bell. They go try to have all three of them niggas ready to play a. Uh, Let's just start at running back, which I think is going to cause uh, a cluster in their backfield. Bell going to feel some kind of way. And you know them boys going to get reminded how he tried to trash Andy. So that's going to light a fire in that defense. 
and Tyron should be back. Honey Badger should be back. And I know he hates how we play. That's another thing in that game against Cleveland. We missed his direction being uh, the being uh, the quarterback out there telling people where to go, where to be at. You can see some players was lost because people forget that middle linebacker and that free safety, depending on how your team is set up, they yeah. direct all traffic. And when they're not there, the usual caller, them players be lost. So it's going to be a tough one. I think it's going to come down to like maybe a field goal. I think both defenses are going to be going back and forth at each other. So I'm going to give the slight edge to Kansas City. But it just depends on the the if if Clark ain't out there and Honey Badger ain't out there again, then I give it to Baltimore because I can't see us doing two you know escape from Alcatraz games back to back like that. Interesting. Now I want to go to our our fantasy league real quick. Congratulations and props to you, first of all. You started the season off with the W. Yeah. That, that's a wonderful thing. Yeah. I was down by like 30 some odd points going into last night. You know, it's all good. I didn't. I was in it all the way up until the end. We we got tied at 122. I told However, you. You his he had that. Baltimore's field goal kicker. Yeah. And that put him ahead for good. But I but told you, you wasn't believing. I was like, you still got a chance. Jacobs made it interesting for me. Um, Marquise Brown made it interesting for me. So I didn't get blown out. So I'm, I'm happy about that. I, I am not going to just automatically panic and blow up the fantasy squad. <laughs> I'm going to see what's going to happen this week and hopefully get the W. I'm playing against Ben this week. Ben got him a W to start off the season. So congrats to him, too. Uh, I just want to say I hate y'all, but that's just petty jealousy. I'm not going to lie. And uh, I want to say I wish you well, but I hope that y'all both lose, too. That way we're both one and one. <laughs> uh, you know, I can't do that when I got the medal coming to me tomorrow. I can't do that. Like I said, keep it warm for me. All right. Um, I want to close it out, but I want to uh, talk about something real quick, something a little bit deeper. Uh, I just want to give a quick commentary. As you know, my brother, I went to uh, – my brother Kaz's son had passed away. We went to his funeral. And uh, it was at an old church of mine. And I'm just going to say this without – putting any names out there without discussing any situations the more things change the more they stay the same and I was not happy and I I'm pretty sure you hear that pounding that's going on it's raining hard out here raining and hail anyway when I say the more things change the more they stay the same I was not happy with the way some of the people our people acted in church during a funeral and, and it never fails whether it be a wedding a funeral or any other get together some people show their true colors and a funeral of all places is supposed to be a celebration of life uh the remembrance of somebody who's gone on you don't turn it into a spectacle and that's one of the things that uh I did not like about my former church there when I lived in Kansas City. There are people there that have to, it's all about them. If you could have listened to how many people's sentences contain the words I or me, when it's not even supposed to be about them, that was a turnoff right there. When you see, and I'm going to call it what it is, fake ass acting, and that's what it is. It's a turnoff. And it, 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 it makes me appreciate not being there right now. And, and I hate to say that about a church or anybody in it. However, 
it is what it is. And whoever you are, wherever you are, don't be like that. Don't be one of them fake ass acting people. Don't. Brother, I just, I can't even put it in the context of words. It was an embarrassment to self and it should be an embarrassment to the people around you. Sadly, it's not. Today's world is all about social media because we're going to take a video. We're going to put it on Snap. We're going to put it on uh, IG. Is That's what it's all about. When I went to my uncle's uh, father-in-law's funeral, good dude, loved him. He showed me number love from day one. All of a sudden, his daughter's Daddy! Then drop down. Mm -hmm. Daddy! Then drop down. All four of his daughters wilding out doing some dumb shit. The mom was just sitting there. So it's like, it's always, unfortunately, going to be a show. Whether you want it to be or not, it's, it's going to be a show. That's, that's the way of the world now. Everybody wants the go viral attention. I saw some day where God was like, it used to be hard to go viral. Now you just you snap your fingers and you're viral nowadays. What's the world coming to? Somebody and, the world and, and you know, it viral. wasn't even just that. It was like, you know, he was only 27 years old. His parents yeah. are both there. And most of them acknowledged her because she was a former member of the church. My boy didn't get any acknowledgement whatsoever. Yeah. That's, That's some that BS. Part. Sadly, that that sounds right. Is because like my um, in our league, Lamont, when his mom passed earlier to COVID, if memory serves me correct, they spoke to him. You know, talked about his kids. Never once mentioned his wife. It's just, you know, it's we're in a sad world to where that affection. Or that, that caress that you expect to get doesn't happen anymore. No, sir. My wife, no. when, my, when my dad was dying, I asked her, because I got to say, I got to speak to him one last time the day before he died. I said, do you want to say anything to him? She just walked off. And then later I was like, why? I don't know how to handle situations like those. And so then when it came time to caress me, it was like, go get you something to eat and something to drink. I'll be at the house. It's just, we unfortunately, we don't have people that have that value anymore to where they want to smooth the situation, make sure everybody's okay. Instead, we got people that's out here for shits and giggles and want to get that Girl, did you see such and such? Man, she really took it hard. Well, you know, you know, this like we gotta keep the gossip train going instead of being there for one another. It's it's one of the things where we need 70 news to come back and just go through this, just go through people to remind them what human decency is, because no one knows anymore, sadly. No one sadly. knows, no one gets it. That's true. All right, that's all I got. You got anything you want to part with before we shut it down? Last thing I got, I don't even want to talk about it. Just the asinineness of this new government to deal with the Trump supporters and just to deal with the fact that you might have went too far with this money. Uh, and I, I want to read this. I want to read the article directly. Biden tells the Treasury Department that the IRS will monitor transactions on all U.S. accounts over $600 because the IRS, Treasury Department, whatever, feels that there is several hundreds of millions of dollars that they miss out on every year that people don't report. Mm. So now you want to come to us to get back the money you've given us 
but in a roundabout way to get money. Think about that. That's sad. All because that money got spent, but didn't get spent how you wanted to get spent. Now, when I got mine, I've used it for my house. I've used it for shit involving the house. Kind of how they want to do it. Some people know it's just sitting on there. Some, they going balling, you know, but not how you wanted them to ball. You didn't want them to buy a bunch of clothes. You want them to spend that money elsewhere on something else. You can't dictate how money gets spent. So your answer to that is, any transaction over 600, then you go check everybody's fucking check. Everybody who get paid to make decent money, you're going to be looking at their checks. Yeah. So I look at it like this. We're in 2021. By 2025, a lot of motherfuckers from this, these past two years be getting audited, I guarantee you. Damn. That's that's true. All them motherfuckers that are going exempt on, in, on taxes and shit, your ass about to get out of it because of shit like this. You would have got away with it, but shit like this, they about to red flag your ass. Tell them they better claim zero. <laughs> yeah, that, that's all I got. That's all I got now. All right. I want to thank everybody for uh, listening in. Please, uh, if you're on YouTube, like, comment, subscribe. You know what we always say. Beat that YouTube algorithm. Um, leave us a comment. Let us know what you like, what you don't like, what you want to hear, what you want to see. If you don't want to leave a comment on YouTube, you can email us at the two dudes podcast at yahoo.com. And um, Kevin, it's, it's been a good one again today, brother. I appreciate it. Um, we'll have to do this again real soon, like next Tuesday. Yeah, pretty much. Um, then I can work that in my schedule. I might be able to do that. Right. Um, as always, everybody have a good one. Uh, enjoy the – what's that, Tuesday? Yep. I'm about to say enjoy the Monday night game, but there is no Monday night game. It's Tuesday. Uh, <laughs> Trust me. I haven't slept much since that game, so it still feels like Monday. Enjoy yourself. Enjoy the week. Do what you got to do, not what you want to do, but do what you got to do. That's what's important. Sometimes we got to do shit we don't want to do, but we got to do it to get right. I didn't want to do the shit I had to do today, but I had to do it to get right. If I want to see y'all in 2047, today starts to see you in 2047. Otherwise, you go see me on holidays with a punk-ass flag, and I don't want that shit. So on that note, do what you got to do, not what you want to do. Because it's not always about you. I'll let you boys, please don't yell. All right, everybody, stay positive, stay blessed. Go Raiders. <laughs>